Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh my gosh, you gotta see this. So we took our time getting up this morning. We had no rush, we didn't have to pack down the tent for once, which was a nice super nice. And we decided to make ourselves a nice big egg and sausage breakfast. Well, <laughs> Jess did all the cooking. Uh, I just enjoyed it with our fantastic view of the mountains. Campers were stopping by last night and saying, wow, you're going to have a great view in the morning. <laughs> and we did. The sun <laughs> came right up over those mountains right at us. It was yeah. fantastic. Just a wicked day. And today is our anniversary. So couldn't ask for anything better. Absolutely. We decided to come out to the Tablelands, which is actually can be a short little hike. We turned it into a little bit longer. <laughs> so we always like to stop for a picnic. Behind us, you'll see the Tablelands. Just absolutely wild, so unique. It really is incredible. And I don't know what direction that is, but <laughs> we're just seeing the mountains of Grosmorne and it's just- We have a 360 degree view all the wild. way around us. The rocks below us are absolutely stunning. Like just the geology and the history here is phenomenal. So we couldn't resist the urge, but to stop and have some lunch and just take some time to absolutely soak all of this in. Like, seriously, yeah. seriously check out this view behind us. Like, the view in front of us is just as crazy. We have a babbling brook kind of river running down the middle of this giant gorge here. It's, it's fantastic. Like, I can't get over it. The, the yeah. weather today is perfect. The temperature is, is not too hot. There's a nice breeze. Like, finally, everything's coming together. <laughs> so grateful to, to have a day of no rain. Yeah. So we determined hiking all the way up into there would probably take us much longer than we actually think. It's very deceiving how far stuff is. So what we've decided is to hike down to the bottom and then kind of back up over here somewhere. And then we're gonna hike all the way back down. That's kind of our current plan. Oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. Such a crazy landscape. Like, I, you know, it really does feel alien. Decided to hike up a little higher. Jess is way the heck down there. I don't know if you can, uh, I don't know if you can pick her out. She's a little tiny speck down there. Let's try and uh, zoom in here for you. Way down here. Oh my gosh. <sighs> oh my gosh, you gotta see this. All right, now the fun part. Back down the mountain. Okay, this is gonna take way longer. <laughs> Now we are just walking back to the car and as you can see it's a pretty nice flat pathway. It's a very, it's, I think it's labeled as easy. easy. Yep. 
Um, so it take an hour or two, depending on your activity level and how long you want to stop and enjoy the sights. Mm -hmm. All right, rating out of 10, table lands. Oh, this is 10 out of 10. Yeah. This is wicked. 10 out of 10. <laughs> the Northern Scavenger Boys would absolutely be loving this. Yeah, we were thinking about them as we were eating lunch. <laughs> the history and geology of these rocks and everything. Those boys would be going nuts right now. <laughs> <laughs> Telling us all the history. I won't do it justice. No, you have to look it up or come here for yourself. Well, that was a full day. The sun is just about to set behind the tree line there. We spent the day hiking the tablelands, which is absolutely insane, and then went and learned all about the tablelands and the rock and the history at the Discovery Center. A very educational. I absolutely love learning about the history and everything like that. Just sitting down to some hot dogs now with this insane view. Once again, just absolutely blown away every time we look out at the mountains. Probably just gonna sit back and enjoy the view and uh, climb into bed. Last night it got pretty chilly, uh, so we're expecting the same thing again tonight. So just gonna bundle up, get cozy in the tent, and uh, call it a night. Okay, quintessential camping meal hot dogs. It's not camping until you have hot dogs. This is true. Day six, early in the morning, thought we'd get up get going, go for a hike. This one's right at the Lamond campground area, just a short kind of walk down the road. It is the Lamond River hike. The trail is eight kilometers and it's expected to take two to three hours. Lamond River. Follow this trail as it, tra as it traces its way through the sheltered valley of the Lamond River, where trees grow taller than anywhere else in the park. Beneath the mature forest canopy, you'll find quiet peacefulness and views of the river and its forested slopes. So our campground was somewhere down here. We just hiked down the road. We're now here. And we're gonna hike along the Lamond River. We get to a lookout over here. Right in front of the moose exclosure and the whole exclosure is surrounded by moose scat. It is literally everywhere. Well about 20 minutes into the trail. Um, not really quite sure where to go from here though. The trail has been quite overgrown. Yeah. Uh, lots and lots of moose droppings. Right at the beginning there is actually a moose exclosure, I believe that's where this is located. I'll have to look that up later and make sure that's what that was. Uh, but it's this big fenced off area where moose can't get to. Uh, it's, it's like a science experiment, I believe. They well, said. Yeah, and it's to show visitors how the forest would look if moose weren't around. So, yeah, you can see how much bigger the trees and shrubs are in that exclosure. So the moose can't get in there to eat any of it. Yeah. So it's really interesting to see how much moose affect the area that they live in. So now we'll pretend you're going this way. we're trying to figure out where to go. I'm thinking this way. Okay. So we were a little off with uh, our directions here. Did find the trail, got back on it. And now we're at our first obstacle of the day. So we got the creek right here, but we need to get over on the other side. There's a little blue man over there, which indicates the hiking trail continues that way. And I don't know if you can see behind me, but there is the bridge and it has been washed out a while ago by the looks of it. So we are, so we are gonna try and hop skip our way across the creek here.
Well, so far this trail's been quite overgrown, quite muddy, and uh, poorly marked. It's tough to compare any trail to the tablelands that we did yesterday. But this one gets so far like a 1 out of 10, really. It's pretty, it is nice, and you get to see a little bit of the ocean um, at the beginning. And then you just kind of dive into the into the forest and the mud. There are a few boardwalks, but they're mostly destroyed. You have anything good to say so far, sweetie? No, I agree with the one to ten so far. <laughs> <laughs> all right, after all that mud, we've got a lovely boardwalk that's got into our intersection that we were aiming for. So there's a lookout just down this boardwalk this way, or we can head back to the highway 300 meters that way. So let's check it out. We've done four kilometers so far, so we've done half of the trail. It is completely overgrown, covered in mud, and uh, not well marked. And to be honest, there's not a whole hell of a lot to see. Coming from the tablelands yesterday, where we were just like awestruck the entire time, this was pretty standard trail, um, nothing too exciting. And you know, we hiked out to the lookout point, which is an additional 300 meters, and again, lovely, uh, but it did not increase our one out of 10 trail rating. As far as lookouts go, yeah, normally lookouts are from like a lookout point up high. We're right down ground level with the river. Side. Um, we did see a grouse or something along those lines just a few minutes ago uh, across the trail, which was kind of neat. The first bit of wildlife that we've really seen out here in uh, Newfoundland so far. So that gives it maybe a boost, maybe a one and a half to a two, just because we saw a little bit of wildlife and there was a lot of uh, moose scat. So that had our hopes up that we might, you know, spook up a moose or something along the way, but it is now starting to spit. And uh, yeah, we're going to decide how we want to get back. We have two options at the moment. We can do the trail we just did, or we could hike out and just take the road back to the Le Mans campground. So essentially an hour and a half, it's going to take us to get back along the exact same trail that we took to get here, which, as we said, wasn't that stunning. If there was some more lookouts and stuff along the way, 100%. Yeah. The other option is head back to uh, a different parking lot where a, a separate trail starts, which I believe is called Stuckless Pond. Uh, it's an even longer trail, so we're not going to attempt that today. We'd like to get back for lunch, uh, but then we can take the road back. So it probably take us an hour and a half of maybe walking along a road too, I'm not sure, but yeah, just as equal of opportunity to see a moose along the road or any wildlife as well, so. Yeah, exactly. Jess's log of Grossmorum Provincial Park. We are on day six of our four week adventure. Uh, feels pretty special so far. Just finished the Lamon River Trail. We're going to go check out the map to see if we're taking a road back would be the smarter option because it was pretty lackluster. Sorry, Lamon. All in all, feeling awesome. So excited that we spent our 17 year anniversary out here. That's pretty special. So, this is the kind of stuff right here that we were hoping for on the Le Monde River Trail. We are just kind of at the junction where Stuckless Pond starts, the trail starts one way, and the Le Monde River Trail veers off the other direction. And uh, yeah, this is on the other trail. Oh, this is painted. So what we just did, we started at Le Monde and we followed this trail, not so straight of a trail as on the map. To here we checked, went and checked out this lookout point and now we are this little red dot and we are contemplating heading back to the road and then following the road up instead of taking the trail back after a morning hike in the woods we made it back to the campground it felt so good to stretch our legs after four days of driving but we are craving something more adventurous 
So we've decided to kick it up a notch. Tomorrow, we're packing down all of our camping gear for an one night of primitive camping in the back country of Gross Morn. These sites are a bit of a gamble because you can't book them in advance. We've been planning this trip for months, booking everything except for this one night. So tonight, under the threat of rain, we're huddling in one of these incredible communal areas in our campground, and we're gonna sort through all of our camping gear and condense it into two small backpacks. After a quick dinner, we hit the sack early. Tomorrow, we are rising with the sun to head back to the Discovery Center to snag a permit for the night of primitive camping. Until then, stay curious, stay adventurous, and we'll catch you in the backcountry. That's right. Wow. Just to wieners. <laughs> and then checked out the adventure center. Discovery. Discovery. It's actually bringing a tear to my eye, but I think it's just the wind. I would never forget you, little buddy. <laughs>